Hey, Pretty Not Smart listeners, this episode is proudly brought to you by Lola V, an award-winning hair care line founded by the fabulous Jennifer Aniston. You know, hair is so iconic and needs no introduction. Imagine this, Jen got tired of the same old struggle we all face, choosing between hair products that work and ones that are actually good for us. With Lola V, the dilemma is history. Todos ponemos our hair through the ringer, coloring, heat styling, stress, aging... Y la lista goes on. Over time, it takes a toll. Por eso, it's crucial to have productos that not only repair the look of the damage, but also shield your locks from future harm. Enter Lola V's bestsellers, the cult classic Glossing Detangler and Perfecting Leave-In Conditioner. Pero no nomás son styling products. They're your hair's new best friends. Y aquí tenemos algo special for y'all, our awesome listeners. For a limited time, you get an exclusive 15% off your entire order at lowlivy.com. Just use code PRETTY at checkout. I mean, if you're taking hair care advice, why not listen to the woman who introduced us to the Rachel Cut and then just recently introduced us? Hello, full circle moment. I used to not pay any attention to the productos that I would put on my hair. And yet I would always complain about why my hair was always so dry and frizzy and not shiny. But it's because I literally paid no attention to what I was putting on my hair. Pero with Lola V, my hair feels so silky and actually looks shiny now. I love that Lola V is plant-based, it has no silicones, and it's cruelty-free and vegan. After the shower, the glossing detangler, perfecting leave-in, and lightweight hair oil are a triple threat for your styling routine. They work beautifully together to prime prep and finish for a silkier, shinier Jennifer Aniston approved hair. Unlock Jennifer Aniston approved hair at lolavie.com. As our loyal listeners, you'll get an exclusive 15% off your entire order when you use code PRETTY at checkout. That's 15% off your order at L-O-L-A-V-I-E dot com with promo code PRETTY. Please note you can only use one promo code per order and discounts can't be combined. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. February is the month of love, so why not show some love to your skin? Most skincare routines only deliver superficial results. Thanks to today's sponsor, One Skin, you get a scientifically proven treatment that improves the appearance and health of your skin at the cellular level. The secret, One Skin's property, OS1 peptide. It's the first ingredient scientifically proven to reduce buildup of senescent cells. Those notorious zombie cells that contribute to skin aging. Fewer zombie cells mean healthier, younger looking skin with fewer lines, wrinkles, reduced age spots, and a stronger natural barrier. Something that's especially important this time of the year. Your skin does so much for you. Return the favor with One Skin. For a limited time, our listeners will get an exclusive 15% off their first One Skin purchase using the code PRETTY when you check out at oneskin.co. Invest in the health and longevity of your skin with One Skin. I heard about One Skin for the first time on TikTok. I saw someone reviewing it and they gave really good reviews about the producto. I love that this product is very moisturizing to my skin. And not only that, but I also like that it's not scented. But I'm at the point where I'm starting to see some fine lines because I make so many facial expressions. So I'm really excited to see how this product works on my skin over time. One Skin is more than skincare. It's about skin longevity, targeting the root causes of aging to help you look and feel your best at every age. Get started today with 15% off using code PRETTY at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code PRETTY. After your purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. It's time to expect more from your skincare routine. Invest in the health of your skin with One Skin. This podcast is presented by NYX Cosmetics Pro Fix Stick Concealers. NYX Cosmetics Pro Fix Stick Concealers is so affordable, you guys. It's only $9. You can get three shades for less than the price of a more expensive one. It's literally the best bang for your buck. I love that the concealer contains hyaluronic acid, so it's really skin loving and works for all skin types, especially if you prep with a nice hydrating primer first. The size is also so easy and convenient. You can keep it in your purse for a quick touch-up while you're on the go. And when it's on, it's on for 12 hours. 
And one of the cool things about this concealer is that it doesn't cake up on you. It looks like a natural, flawless finish at the end, and it looks so, so nice on your skin. Get your NYX Cosmetics Pro Fix Stick Concealers at your favorite makeup retailer and at NYXCosmetics.com. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Pretty Not Smart with your host, Yoatsi. And Louie, a.k.a. the baddest perra. If you're new to Pretty Not Smart, leave. Too late. Uh -huh. Wait, no, Welcome you guys were actually show. just talking about that. Well, I'm scared. That season one is, is coming. coming to an end. To a dun, theater dun, near dun. you. <laughs> <laughs> Soon. Soon we will be wrapping up season one of Pretty Not Smart. Dude, it went by like so quick. No, this isn't the last episode. No, eh? no, no, no Sí, todavía falta poquito, but literally we were just talking about how it's going to be almost a year of Pretty Not Smart. It all went by so fast. Literally. And I because we read our comments like so often and somebody was like, can you guys believe it's almost a year of PNS yeah, in yeah. May? Yeah. I was and like, I was like, oh, what the fuck? That's crazy, huh? One yeah. year. And then our fucking setup changed like four times in that one year. Literally, it changed so much. But it was a journey. I thought we're all ending it today. I know. We're like, bye, you guys. And look, a little update. We have not forgotten about our celebration for hitting 100K. Don't yes. think we forgot. We haven't. We've just been planning it. Yeah, we're planning it. We heard y'all's feedback. We heard what you guys wanted and the majority. So we're working on it. We're working on it. And we're going to have it done pretty soon actually yeah. and then we're gonna hit you up on how to enter yes <laughs> do you have the word of the fucking second uh yeah i do the what word of the central like? pascualita <laughs> I, all the comments always I say know. pascualita a ver <sighs> the word so i need you guys to start giving us more word of the centuries i fuck these glasses i can't they're all <laughs> fucking dirty and they're throwing me off um because I'm looking through the comments and there's no word of the centuries. And I need to test <laughs> Louis. <laughs> but Stephanie5972, mm -hmm. she said, word of the day should be hypocritical. Ay, por favor. Pues lo que ella dijo. No, block her. <gasps> <laughs> I just kidding. I will never block you, Stephanie. Uh, what? I don't even know what the fuck you just said. Hypocritical. I don't even know what that means. What does it mean? Um... Like you're you're being an extreme critic, Hypo hypocritical about something. Okay, H uh -huh. Y yeah P O C R I T I C A L. Yeah, really. <laughs> you can spell that, but you can't spell fucking napkin. Is because <laughs> I'm a hypocritic guy. <laughs> no, what was the one that uh, advice? Oh, yeah. So last week I had him spell advice, but I guess you spelled it right. Yeah, the comments were backing me up, stupid ass. Yeah, so maybe I'm the dumbass because yeah. they were like, well, he's right, you're too I don't So I guess there's two different. One of them is I'm going to advise you on how to like graduate, and one of them is I'm going to give you advice. Oh. Like an advisor, or like, I'm going to give you advice. I get it. Which is kind of like the same thing, but it's just like, like stupid. a different font. <laughs> it's kind of like stupid. <laughs> it's a Thank different you. font. But yeah. Well, that's sickening. It's like technically got it right. Yeah, so technically, I guess you're, you were both pretty and smart that day. Yeah, I wanted that one. <laughs> so what are we even talking about today? You literally just told me you had cheese, man. Now you're throwing the ball in my court. Well, I wanted to like warm us up. No, what's okay, the cheese, it's man? It's because I was reading the comments, right? Pretty not smart. I was reading the comments and there was just about a lot of like cheating comments and how like men and oh, women cheat those. and like like some stories. Yeah, people were putting their little stories. And out it there. made me think of a story. <laughs> I what? hate talking about my past, bitch. But it made me think about a story from my past. Oh, it's your past. It was um so I was single. I don't know the exact like timeline of this, but this was like a while back, you guys. And I'm gonna expose a nombre. Why? But I'm not going to say his name, just his story. Okay. <laughs> so there was this guy from like high school who hit me up. Uh -huh. And I was just like, oh, hey, what's up? Like, yeah, I guess. Like, how you been? And he was just like, oh, like, we should hang out. And I, lo I literally thought of it like nothing besides like, oh, he just wants to hang out. Like, I guess sometimes I can be very like 
mensa when it comes to like guys and sometimes i can't tell if they're flirting or not like you can't read the room i can't read it but i thought he literally just wanted to catch up because it was someone super random that i was like okay like sure yeah let's hang out Mm -hmm. and we hung out and like when we hung out we, we were a little like flirty vibes but mind you this whole time i thought this man was single this whole time and i did my digging on his social media before or after before but like bef- because when he messaged me this was fuck this was such a long time ago but um i was looking through like his whole feed i don't th- i don't even think stories was a thing mm-hmm. back in this day but i was looking through his feed and he barely posted anything he had no things with like girls or anything so and you know how guys sometimes will put on their bio like if they have a girlfriend yeah, they'll yeah. have like her name or so- something like that especially like back in the day, but he didn't have nothing like that. And when we hung out, not once did he bring up his girlfriend and like nothing like that. Mm -hmm. And we hung out maybe like two more times. He even took me out to like dinner and everything. And then eventually we got to like doing the deed and we did the whole deed and everything. (gasps) Fuck you. Yeah. But this was like a long time ago, but this is where it gets really bad. Mm. Maybe like after we did the deed, like maybe I kind of, like, got over it, and I just stopped talking to him because I was like, like, for what? Like, I'm just going to stop talking to him. Maybe, like, I want to say a month after we were kind of, like, not really talking that much anymore, he posted a picture with his girlfriend, and he was like, just wanted to wish you a happy one-year anniversary, babe. (gasps) Ew. Yeah, dude. And I felt like fucking shit. Not the one year. Happy one-year anniversary, babe. (gasps) And I was just there like, oh, my gosh and reading all of these comments like kind of triggered that memory back because honestly i had kind of forgotten it Uh but i was just like dude men well i'm sure some women too but he was really like i don't give a fuck yeah and like if it was like a one night stand vibe okay that would have been sickening no it wouldn't have been sickening (laughs) because he's still (laughs) cheating but the fact that he we hung out once and then we like went on like two more little casual dates we went to dinner one time and then, like, we still did the deed and all. And not yeah. once did he talk about his girlfriend. Ew. He, like, well, obviously. He was, he was so, say. like, chill about it. And he had a whole ass girlfriend. And I feel so bad. Well, not to give him, like, the benefit of the doubt. But what if it was, like, one of those relationships that's, like, on and off? Like, let's hope it was that. Because, like, there's some people who, like, they'll break up with their significant other. And then when they get back together, they just continue on to the little time they already have together okay yes that that's kind of like what i was thinking but then i went to the girl's instagram oh i went to her instagram the girl had hella pictures of them together like a bunch of pictures like you know girls were cute we like to post like what we're doing and it's just him like all sick on his Instagram. yeah he had like no pictures of her like (gasps) at all so remember guys how we were having that conversation about red flags if you don't post you I know, and that's one thing that people, like, bring up a lot, because I think we talked about it last time, how there's a difference between, like, being private and being secretive. Yeah. And I don't know where the line gets drawn there. But that was, yeah, that, that made me feel some type of way, like, because I was, I was reading some of your, your guys' comments, and some of you were talking about your how you got cheated on, and, like, just how much pain it causes, and, like, how you don't, you're like, I never want to do this to somebody, but just, like, how some people can just be like, mm, I don't give a shit. Like, especially yeah. if it's, like, a longer relationship. Because if they, if, like, a month later he celebrated their year anniversary, they were probably, like, fucking 10, 11 months when he did the deed with me. Yeah. Oh, that's so ugly. That's so ugly. And I felt so gross. And part of me wanted to be, like, a girl's girl and, like, tell the girl. But another part of me was, like, no, because I don't know her. I don't know how she was going to react. And you know how some girls blame the girl? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some girls will, like, blame the girl and will be like, you fucking stupid hoe. And, like, what if she came at me? And I'm like, babe, I, I literally didn't know. Yeah. And, like, what if she didn't believe me and she was just like, like, nah, fuck that. Like, you had to have no, or I don't know. But I literally did not know. I did not keep up with his life at all. Yeah, I've always wondered, like, in that case, like, I've always wondered, like, because I've never been a mistress. Like, uh-huh. I've never been a person I that, like. A mistress. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been a person that's, like been you've never been a side bitch yeah there you go (laughs) yeah so like but i've always wondered i was like if that were to happen and i'd find out like would i say something or would i just like shut the fuck up because like part of me feels like i wouldn't want to say something because eventually like they say like the truth always comes out i always believe that it it can be like in a month a day or a fucking year two years but it will always 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 come come out. out so 
I would feel like I would let that do its thing because, like you said, I would be so scared of someone coming at me. Because remember the last um, podcast I talked about, like, me with my friend at work and, like, uh -huh. his partner? Yeah. I was definitely the fucking puta and, like, the skonka oh, because... I had no idea, like how you're saying, you're like, I had no idea, but everybody at work was like, fuck you, puta, stupid, I'd be, and yeah, everyone was like, like coming at me, and like, yeah. y el noviecito, pues, they got back together, and they were like, ah, y yo quedé bien mal. And exact, look, see, same thing, so I didn't want, when I found out, I was like, I can't say nothing, because I don't know what's going on in their relationship, I don't know nothing, and what if I look like the bad person, or sometimes and people see it as like petty. Yeah, like, what if it's just, like, super bad on my part? And then ellos se van a contentar, and they're going to get back together, y ya. Y no más quedas mal. And like, I'm looking like the skunka, like, if it was my fucking fault. Uh, I know. So I was just like, ugh. So I was like, I'm just going to have to, like, let God do his thing. And hopefully she found out. I actually got, like, the biggest ick from that person, from the guy. Mm -hmm. I felt, like, so gross, because I was like, dude, like, oh, Like, I don't know, it just made me feel some type of way. And the fact that he was just hanging out with me and could be so chill knowing he had a girlfriend at home mm -hmm. made me feel some type of way, like, really, really bad. So I ended up following him, and I, I haven't, like, heard anything from him in super, super long. But, yeah, that was really gross, you guys. Ugh. I had to share the team. I remember in one of my relationships, there was um, a time that, well, I was dating with, I was dating, I was living with, um, my partner at the time uh -huh. and i remember there was this one time that somebody had sent them like a dm like a hey girly dm okay and, well, like they, a chill one no just like hey girly like i have something to tell you like those messages <gasps> where you're just like like i like i have cheese me on your partner basically <gasps> so and then this is after like they told me everything but basically they had gotten a dm like hey girly like i have something to tell you and then my partner was like what what the fuck's good so basically there was, like, a profile on a dating app, like, using my pictures and stuff. Oh. So they were, like, pretending to be me. I was relieved. <laughs> For real. I was like, shh. <laughs> I know. I'm like, shh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, they were, like, pretending to be me. And then it caused this big-ass fucking argument between, like, me and my partner because they thought, like, I was on this <gasps> app. But then I was like, we live together. But even though, I, I mean, I guess that technically can't, like stop somebody from doing it yeah but i was like we live together i'm home all the fucking time like what am i gonna get out of like being on this app or yeah. like it was just like this big thing and then um especially like with who you are i feel like it's kind of hard to <laughs> hide shit like that and especially because like my pictures are so um accessible oh well so, like, yeah it's it's hard to like figure out i guess like if the pictures are real or not because for example i post on so many platforms so like there'll be pictures mm -hmm. on instagram i mean there'll be pictures on my instagram that aren't on like another platform or, or like, like the ones on your snapchat I was gonna say, or like my snapchat that they'll be like i've never seen you post this picture but that's because it was only up for like 12 hours on snapchat, on snapchat like, and yeah yeah so i feel like moments like that yeah. it's like hard but i think the only thing that really helped to be able to be like it's not me was that that account wasn't verified Okay. So I was like, if it was me and I wanted people to believe it was me, it would be verified. Yeah. Because I have gone on, like, dating apps and, like, I make sure my profile is verified because... Yeah, you have to. I want them to know it's me. It's the real you. We're talking about dating apps and real me. I just remembered a story. What? From, you have more stories with dating apps? Fucking Louis? It just literally triggered my head right now. It triggered uh, my head. Uh, uh, there was this one time that I was on a dating app. And I was looking for like a vato. <laughs> and for I, like dating or just like a little quick night? No, dating. Like I was oh. just like, I'm looking to date. Like I'm not looking to just mess around. Like I wanted to find a date. Like I okay. love all that cheesy shit. And I was like over perreando. Okay. So um, I was on this dating app and like no luck. I literally was like boring, boring, boring. Swiping Oof. left on like, left? Swiping left on like everybody. And finally there was this one guy that I was like, oh, he's cute. As soon as I swiped right... We matched. And I was <gasps> like, oh, I was like, hey, maybe I want that one. <laughs> and I kind of got, like, excited, like, just looking at his pictures. He looked very handsome. Okay. And, like, um, the description, like, of him, like, he was tall. He had, like, facial hair. And um, I was just kind of, like, living for it. Uh -huh. So I was like, ooh, I want that one. <laughs> so I always get scared when I match with somebody thinking, like, are they matching with me because they're like, oh, my God, it's the baddest perra? Or are they matching Oof. with me because they're just like, oh, he's cute, Yeah, you know? Mm. So um, we ended up matching. We were talking. He didn't bring up anything like, is this really you? Or like, is this Louie? Or blah, blah, blah. It was just super casual conversation. Loved talking to him. And I was like, oh, okay, this is cute. He's not asking me anything like that. Like, he might not even know who the fuck I am. So um, 
we're talking for like a good minute but he ends up asking me he's like what's your instagram so we can like <gasps> talk no, no no he's like what's your number so we can talk on there uh-huh and he's like or your instagram whatever makes you feel more comfortable so i was like <laughs> and Shit. i didn't no you know what bullshit he did ask me for my instagram first and i forgot what i said to get out of it because i didn't want him to find my instagram uh, i don't have an instagram i think i did say i don't have an instagram or i think i said i don't use my instagram one of those two or i think i just went straight up and was like oh like what's your number oh, okay, because okay. i didn't want him to like go on my instagram and see like well, what i are. do and then maybe bring those questions up and just it was gonna turn into a whole nother fucking thing yeah so i didn't want to give him my instagram so i gave him my number and um i think after i didn't want to give him his my instagram everything kind of went like sideways I don't remember too much what he asked me, but he asked me something else. And again, I didn't want to say too much. So it went sideways again. I was, uh, I don't remember, but basically I think I sketched him out too much to the point where. Oh my God. He like unmatched me. And you I was scared so him pissed. away. He was probably like, why the fuck is he being so secretive? Yeah. Or low key. I feel like he did know who I was and he was just like, wait, like. The real Louis does have an Instagram, so why is this one telling me he doesn't? Or, like, I don't know, but something happened, but the conversation was going so well. Like, literally so well. And when he unmatched me, I got so pissed. Aww. I was like, fuck. I was like, he probably thought I was, like, fucking catfishing. Like, oh, I'm fucking all this weird. Shit. Yeah, so then um, I remember I went, like, on a little ramp on my Snapchat. So explaining. you guys hadn't met in person? No, it was all just still on the dating app. We were yeah, talking about, yeah, like, hanging out. Yeah, he was, out. like, catfish vibes. Yeah. Like catfish tip. Yeah, so <laughs> then I went on, like, Instagram, I think, and I was, like, trying to describe him to see if my follower, and I even said his name, I think, on Instagram. <gasps> I was, it's because I really wanted to find him. And I was like, you guys, I was like, there's this guy that I was like, Fuck matched you. with. And How I was long like, ago was this? It was definitely a long, like maybe a year or two ago. Oh, shit. And I was like, you guys, I was with this guy on a dating app. We matched. It was so cute. I was like, conversation was going amazing. I was like, but I think he thought I was catfish. I was like, if any of you all know or have a friend named blah, blah, blah. I was like, I think I remember this. I think so. And I was just like, please. Help me find his Instagram. I was like, or send me his Instagram. I was like, come on, girls. I mean, guys, help me. <laughs> so I remember a bunch of people were sending me like guys' profiles with like that name. Yeah. But it, I couldn't find him. Uh, so you never found him? Uh, no, I never found him after that. So <laughs> I was super sad and like all depressed. Andele. But I want to say like fucking months later. I hate my phone. It's really scary. You know how like our phones listen to us like when we're talking? <gasps> yeah. I'm pretty sure this happened, but I remember one time I randomly followed. <gasps> no, bullshit. That's another guy. Adam. I used to. Adam I found a... him. I do remember this story. It was yeah, Addy. Addy. I do remember so this story. So Addy remembers the guy's name and everything. And I guess Adam watched a random ass TikTok, y'all. Like, not give it with me. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Just probably <laughs> like, it was like a little kid playing with rocks. I don't know what the fuck it was. And you know how everyone siempre tiene la costumbre of reading the comments or whatever? Yeah. So I guess he went to go read the comments. And like one of the comments that had like a good amount of likes um, had the name of the guy that I was looking for like months back. <laughs> so then Adam was like, wait, what the fuck? So he also remembered what the guy's pictures like because I ha had shown the profile to Adam. Yeah. So he clicks the picture and he's like, wait, is this the guy that Louis was like looking <laughs> for? So then Adam sends it to me. He's like, you're welcome, my love. And then I was like, <gasps> I was like, Adriana Lima. I was like, how the fuck? <laughs> so, did. Addy found him. That, that was crazy. Did you message him or something after? I did. And what happened? We went on a date. Oh, yeah. I see the one that had the booger. No. <laughs> no, that wasn't Imagine. him. Imagine. Louis was like, never mind. <laughs> no, that wasn't him. I went on a date with him. It was it was cute, but um, I it was the same thing. I feel like our personalities weren't really like matching okay. so like literally he did nothing bad it was nothing awkward or where i was like oh like egg no like it was a cute little day we just went to like the park and walked and stuff but i just feel like our personalities weren't really like clicking it was mm. more of like oh you can be like an amiga but but yeah that's what I'm, I'm i'm very like into like energy and vibes because he was yeah. really handsome he looked like his pictures everything everything was accurate as fuck but but the vibe just was the vibe there. just wasn't there so i was like mm. like it it didn't no me dio las ganas to go on a second day or like yeah, continue okay, it. Okay, okay. But yeah, shout out to Adriana Lima. He was helping me find. We miss you, Addy. Yeah, Addy, come back. All come right. Back, Addy. Uh, my matchmaker. Ah! <laughs> you're like, find me a new He's match. He's all my Cupid. He's like, 
I hope you have a good Valentine's. <laughs> <laughs> have you found somebody like on social media before where you were like, oh, I want that one. But y'all were just like, eh. right now. Right now. <laughs> no, um, I was actually going to ask you, isn't there an app for like creators or influencers to find love? Yeah, I guess it's like... What the fuck? Like a Tinder for for influencers? I guess so. So I don't know too much about this app. I've never used it, but I heard it is like an app for like... I guess there's even like celebrities on there sometimes. What? Downloading now. And um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it won't be like crazy as celebrities like... Bad Benny, are you on there? But like, you know, people who are like probably like kids of celebrities or just also like, I don't know, celebrities what who aren't that heck? popular and stuff. And influencers and shit, but from what I know... Um, it's expensive. Oh, you have to pay for it? What? Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? I think you have to pay for it. I'm pretty sure you guys don't like take my word for it, but I'm pretty sure you have to pay for it. It's like a subscription. And then after that, I think you have to somehow show that you are like you a have public to get figure or something. I know the pinche flojera. I'm okay. But it's porque imagínate si, like, for example, imagine me. I just knew about the app and I wasn't like nobody on social media or nothing. And I was uh-huh. like, I'm going to get a fucking social media person. Uh, sure either like, like a grand a month. <gasps> yeah, imagine. I, I have no idea. But yeah, I have heard well, of that. Well, let's app. look at my crystal ball and let's see. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, did you see that? Uh, Juicy Couture. Bitch, <laughs> did you see that I got a Valentine? <gasps> I did. I got a Valentine. Okay, no. And it was crazy because, like, last episode, I was like, I don't have a Valentine. And now I have a Valentine. Maybe they're just waiting for the date to come closer. Because low-key, when they asked me, it was still really early. Well, I feel like people start asking since fucking January, no? No, no, cierto. I no. feel like mostly they ask, like, maybe a week in advance or, like, mm. the weekend before or something. But nah, kid, not like you're going to prom. Not, not like you have to do it at a certain timeline. No. I just didn't think I was going to get asked for, for Valentine. But I feel like that was, like, the appropriate timeline. Yeah, like, it was yeah. perfect. It was super cute. Yeah, but Now I have a Valentine, and we are going to go on a Valentine dinner. Oh, uh, cute. On actual Valentine's? Fuck no. <gasps> oh. No, because it's yeah. like impossible. Yeah, you're right. Forgot about our last But I'm going to go tomorrow, actually. <gasps> oh, the wait, day, tomorrow. The day before Valentine's, because Valentine's is on Wednesday, babes. Tomorrow's not. It's not this week, stupid ass. Valentine's? Yeah. Are you okay? Today is Monday the 12th. <gasps> Tuesday is oh, the 13th. Shit. Wednesday is the 14th. So when y'all are watching and this, yeah, so Valentine, but I thought it was next week. <laughs> So you're like, I still have a month left. Ah. Oh. So, ¿qué vas a hacer para pinches en día de San Valentín y San Pascua? Finger. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it's going to be so much fun. No, I'm just kidding. On actual Valentine's Day, I'm not doing anything either. <sighs> I need a new co-host, you guys. <laughs> this one is not okay. I didn't take my meds today. No, I did, I did. <sighs> so. Ay, bien pinche serio como si no estás en su casa. Well, not on the podcast. <laughs> so on actual Valentine's Day, I'm going to be with my parents. I'm going to spend it with my mom and dad. Really? Yeah. You're all cock blocking them. <laughs> no, because my parents love me. <laughs> and only me. me. <laughs> and then I'm Wait, not no, celebrating really? to after. Yeah. Oh, uh, why don't you guys invite me? Because they don't love you. <laughs> it's a day of love. I'm <laughs> just kidding. We don't love you. Like, and you're obviously doing a lot. <laughs> I'm going to go crash you guys' Valentine's party. (laughs) Hey, Pretty Not Smart listeners. This episode is proudly brought to you by Lola V, an award-winning hair care line founded by the fabulous Jennifer Aniston. You know, hair is so iconic and needs no introduction. Imagine this. Jen got tired of the same old struggle we all face, choosing between hair products that work and ones that are actually good for us. With Lola V, the dilemma is history. Todos ponemos our hair through the ringer. Coloring, heat styling, stress, aging. Y la lista goes on. Over time, it takes a toll. Por eso it's crucial to have productos that not only repair the look of the damage, but also shield your locks from future harm. Enter Lola V's bestsellers, the cult classic glossing detangler and perfecting leave-in conditioner. Pero no nomás son styling products. They're your hair's new best friends. Y aquí tenemos algo special for y'all, our awesome listeners. For a limited time, you get an exclusive 15% off your entire order at lolavi.com. Just use code PRETTY at checkout. 
I mean, if you're taking hair care advice, why not listen to the woman who introduced us to the Rachel Cut and then just recently introduced us? Hello, full circle moment. I used to not pay any attention to the productos that I would put on my hair. And yet I would always complain about why my hair was always so dry and frizzy and not shiny. But it's because I literally paid no attention to what I was putting on my hair. But with Lola V, my hair feels so silky and actually looks shiny now. I love that Lola V is plant-based, it has no silicones, and it's cruelty-free and vegan. After the shower, the glossing detangler, perfecting leave-in, and lightweight hair oil are a triple threat for your styling routine. They work beautifully together to prime prep and finish for a silkier, shinier Jennifer Aniston approved hair. Unlock Jennifer Aniston approved hair at lolavie.com. As our loyal listeners, you'll get an exclusive 15% off your entire order when you use code PRETTY at checkout. That's 15% off your order at lolavie.com with promo code PRETTY. Please note you can only use one promo code per order and discounts can't be combined. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. February is the month of love, so why not show some love to your skin? Most skincare routines only deliver superficial results. Thanks to today's sponsor, One Skin, you get a scientifically proven treatment that improves the appearance and health of your skin at the cellular level. The secret, One Skin's property, OS1 Peptide. It's the first ingredient scientifically proven to reduce buildup of senescent cells. Those notorious zombie cells that contribute to skin aging. Fewer zombie cells mean healthier, younger looking skin with fewer lines, wrinkles, reduced age spots, and a stronger natural barrier. Something that's especially important this time of the year. Your skin does so much for you. Return the favor with One Skin. For a limited time, our listeners will get an exclusive 15% off their first One Skin purchase using the code PRETTY when you check out at oneskin.co. Invest in the health and longevity of your skin with One Skin. I heard about One Skin for the first time on TikTok. I saw someone reviewing it and they gave really good reviews about the producto. I love that this product is very moisturizing to my skin. And not only that, but I also like that it's not scented. But I'm at the point where I'm starting to see some fine lines because I make so many facial expressions. So I'm really excited to see how this product works on my skin over time. One Skin is more than skincare. It's about skin longevity, targeting the root causes of aging to help you look and feel your best at every age. Get started today with 15% off using code PRETTY at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code PRETTY. After your purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. It's time to expect more from your skincare routine. Invest in the health of your skin with One Skin. This podcast is presented by NYX Cosmetics Pro Fix Stick Concealers. NYX Cosmetics Pro Fix Stick Concealers is so affordable, you guys. It's only $9. You can get three shades for less than the price of a more expensive one. It's literally the best bang for your buck. I love that the concealer contains hyaluronic acid, so it's really skin loving and works for all skin types, especially if you prep with a nice hydrating primer first. The size is also so easy and convenient. You can keep it in your purse for a quick touch up while you're on the go. And when it's on, it's on for 12 hours. And one of the cool things about this concealer is that it doesn't cake up on you. It looks like a natural flawless finish at the end and it looks so, so nice on your skin. Get your NYX Cosmetics Pro Fix Stick Concealers at your favorite makeup retailer and at NYXCosmetics.com. So last year, no, it wasn't last year. I want to say this was like three years ago. Oh, shit. It was a while back. Going back in the past. I made a video that really shook the internet. (laughs) Which one? No, I got a lot of shit for this video. Oh, like bad. Because like, I feel like I have a good amount of videos who will go like semi-viral and stuff. And it's always pretty good. Obviously, there's always going to be people who like don't fuck with it. But this one definitely had like bitch like wow so let me tell y'all so i made a video on tiktok originally and it was me with um eggs like a case of eggs Uh uh-huh and i was just like 
for all the hombres out there, ten. Te hacen falta to ask your girl for Valentine's Day. Oh, my God. Like, te faltan yes. huevos. Yes. And I did it because, like, well, one, it's funny. I yeah. was like, well, one, like, it's funny. And two, it was supposed to, like, help the girlies out to, like, send it to their man también so they can be like, bitch. Like, because the funny part of it is that I'm a man in nails. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's supposed to be, like... Obviously, there's a gay guy telling you, like, te faltan a ti huevos, because, like, you know, people always want to try to come for the gay guys <laughs> or whatever. So it was supposed to be just, like, a funny thing, like, people who cotorrear. But you know the machistas. Shut up. Get all fucking booty tickled, because they already have palos up their hairy ass nalgas. No, why did they get so fucking hurt like that? So I posted it on TikTok. And it did really good. Like, everyone was like, ah! And, like, it worked for the purpose that I wanted it to. Like, a bunch of uh, my perras were, like, replying, like, oh, my God, I'm going to send this to my man. Or, yeah, like, I remember seeing it. It was fucking funny. Yeah, that and, like, so it did funny. really good on social media. And the comments on TikTok were really good. Pero I want to say where it went bad, because I even posted it on my Instagram, and even there it was funny. And there were, like, dudes replying to, like, dudes with a fucking sense of humor who were, like, ha-ha, te pasas, or, like, yeah. shit like that. But this Instagram that's really popular i don't know if it's still popular now this is like a while back but it, they just post a bunch of hispanic memes okay 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 and they reposted my video and even <gasps> them i don't know who like runs it but they also thought it was funny they're like ha 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 like uh or some shit like that. oh my god so even they thought it was gonna be like they didn't see nothing wrong with that. Like they're like, it's well, no, so I think funny. I think this Instagram page they they'll just repost anything that they find funny. But uh -huh. I don't think they care if it's gonna do good or bad. They're just like, I'm posting it because it's funny. Yeah. So and it has a lot of followers. I think it's like it definitely has over like a million followers. Oh sure. And um, they posted it, and right off the bat, dude, like <gasps> all the comments were so ugly. Like what? Ugly and like. Obviously, you know how they always say, like, when a video lands on the wrong side of the internet? Yeah. I've had a few videos like that, but, like, not too many. So, with this one, I read the comments. I was like, oh, I just want to see what people are saying. Because it was doing really well even on that Instagram page. Yeah. So, when I was looking at the comments, I get it if a guy's going to be like, that way. Like, whatever. Like, just something like that. Yeah, but yeah, the yeah. men in the comments were being, like, just using ugly ass, like, gay slurs and saying like shut up and that's why i'm just like oh like the machistas i swear to god like i, eso si se pasa I de like verdad, always yo. think about like what is it to them que les arde o que les duele like something in them is obviously bad to the point where like they have to express so much hate towards like it was just like a funny video and like obviously i'm i'm not for everybody like i know like some people are gonna find me annoying some people are gonna find me cringy and like some people just might not like the fact that i'm gay but like to see the men in the comments just like bien pinches ardidos a la verga that i was like oh, and like even honey. but there was a lot of my followers or even people who didn't follow me like a lot of señoras who were coming at them yeah. We're like, wait, calmate. Like, it's not that deep. Like, like, and I would check because I remember I would like see some of the people replying to these homophobic as machista as men. And some of the ladies that were protecting me didn't even follow me. But I think they were also like, okay, te pasas de verga. Ew. And the comments were so ugly. So then I reposted it and I was like, I love the comments. Because I was just like, what the fuck? I think it wasn't even so much that it hurt me. It was just so funny seeing, like, how ardidos, ardidos these men were. Yeah. Like, they straight up were just like, Dude, ¿qué muriendo. les pasa? Como si les echaste pinche ácido en la cola. lo único que les dije <laughs> was, te faltan huevos. Y pues sí, you proved I, me right. I te faltan like huevos. I feel like men get so hurt when anything affects, affects their, like, manhood. Mas yeah, their masculinity. Their masculinity. They're like, no, we're fucking tough. Like, 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 a fuerzas, they have to pretend to be, like, the toughest and, like, big huevo things. I'm like, and I'm like shut <laughs> up. You're wearing a dress behind those doors. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> bitch. <He's> like, <laughs> en el primero, lavate los huevos. <laughs> <laughs> and then defend your huevos. Yeah, and then defend your huevos. <laughs> but it was just crazy seeing, like, a, just a funny video turn into something so ugly. But I gained a lot of followers, so I, at least I know a lot of people <laughs> found it funny. And then Dude. I think, um, yeah, so it, it was good seeing the comments, like, stand up for me. I don't think there was any, it was just a good balance. It was, like, the really bad comments and then people, like, who have my back. Yeah. But then also I'm just, glad. like, comments of being, like, ha, ha, ha. But that was, like, I think, like, one of the first few times that I got on, like, the wrong side of, like, <laughs> the internet you where went where all just, the streets were at all yeah, the machistas were at all definitely the where that was at oh, and hell i was just no. like okay, you know what this story reminds me of how we're just going back memory lane with all these stories 
Okay, this story I don't really like, but kind of pertains to that. Oh, me wibble. Yeah, <laughs> now yours. Oh. Uh, this one's not ready to film today. Okay. Do you remember that one time that I took you and your friend to this party and there was a very machista dickhead at the party? No. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. I won't say too much. At that little house party. Yes. Oh, yeah. Toma vos su cara de huevo, pinche frentudo estúpido. I'm just kidding. Sí, sí, no todo no, eso y tú, más. No, pinche feo. Pinche no. Yeah. So I invited Louis because he's my brother and I just wanted him to come. Mm -hmm. And we went to this house party um, and he was just like, oh, can I bring my friend? And then I was like, yeah, the fuck? And obviously Louis' friend was gay and I think you had... Not too long ago, you just came out, right? But everybody yeah, kind of, that. but people had already knew, right? Yeah, everybody I feel like already knew. My parents knew, like everyone. Yeah. So I was like, whatever. Yeah, so Louis was just being himself with his friend. And like, I remember they were, um, at some point, they kind of excluded this themselves towards the party. But because I can understand, you probably did not feel as comfortable. We were just the youngest ones there. I was like a freshman. Yeah, you were really young. I was like a freshman or sophomore, and everybody there was over their 35s. Oh, 30. pinches viejos. Yeah. Even me, they were too old for me. But I remember they were like on the couch, and like, um, I think they were like tickling each other. They were just. No, we weren't. I remember very vividly. We I were you tell me. We were, were simply doing? sitting down and talking and going like on our phones and stuff. I think and they I were know, just like laughing, yeah, just I like know having a good time. We weren't touchy at all because one, I was still very freshly out of the closet. Uh -huh. Two, not even comfortable with my sexuality. This is when I was still like pretty much pretending to be straight. Like I was still wearing my snapbacks. Oh, I was still like, hey, what's up? But it just so happened that you see us and you knew we were gay. And yeah. like you knew we were like two gay friends or we were dating at the time with this friend of mine. But um. Yeah, so it had nothing to do with me or how I was acting with this person. It uh -huh. just rubbed that guy the wrong way. Yeah, there was a guy there that, well, he fucking lived there. And I think he thought, he's literally the description of the man that you were just talking about. Pinche machista, that if yeah. anything, anything around him affects his fucking manhood, he's like, Ugh! he gets all fucking pissed. Yeah. And I think he had, like, came up to me and he was like, I'm going to need your brother to, like, get up. Just come over here, like stop hiding in the corner, yeah, or, like yeah. something like insinuating that like we that. were like trying to hide to do something. Yeah, and then I was just like, "What?" And then he was like, "No, go tell your brother, like stop being over there." And he just like kept looking at them the whole fucking time, uh -huh. and just being like a fucking ardido. Do you remember what ended up happening? Like, did I tell you something, or you did somebody tell, tell you until, something? No, no, no. We left it at that. I don't think you brought it up to me until like after you were like, "Oh, he was being fucking stupid," and like, blah, blah, blah. but like, no, nobody told me anything in that moment. But he was very much like that. And I remember one time he um he made a comment. Dude, this person was such a nasty person. I remember I was around them again and they made a comment about like, fuck, like, why is there so many fucking gays like coming out out of nowhere? And I was like, mm. excuse me? I don't know if I ever told yeah, you this, no, but think. he said it in front of me. And I was like, what the fuck is the problem with that? Yeah. Like, what is the problem? He's like, well, no, it's just that like my son, he's going to grow up and I don't want him to like see those kind of things mm -hmm. and i'm like well like love is love i all <laughs> <I'm real. laughs> love is love. No, but i was just like well like there's it's not affecting you in any way like yeah. what's it doing to you and i think he got upset that i started challenging his answers yeah. and he was just like well i just don't want my son exposed to that shit like why the fuck they gotta be making out in front of my and i'm like nobody is making <laughs> out in front of your son yeah and i was like they're just doing their own thing and i was like i think you're just bothered because they're just like happy living their life mm -hmm. like they're like well they make it so obvious or like walking around holding hands and like mm -hmm. they make it like they're basically having sex in public and i was like babe <laughs> he was just like venting he it was, all out and yeah. i was like babes nobody's fucking doing that and i remember i got so pissed and he actually has a brother-in-law who is also gay mm -hmm. and i called him out and i was like look and I was like, keep your hatred ass comments to yourself, but you are not going to be talking about them in front of me like that because one, my brother's gay and you have a fucking brother-in-law who's gay. Mm -hmm. and I was like, keep your hateful ass fucking comments to yourself and don't say them around me because I will fucking tell you off. I was so pissed, bitch. Yeah, like even him. to this day, I get so fucking mad. I bien, know, even the thought of him, I get really bien calladito se cayó el hocico el wey. Yeah. Not once ever again did he say anything and like se quedó bien pinche calladito because I don't think he thought I was going to challenge him like yeah, that. Yeah, they're just so used to like, well, then again, like this person lived in a household full of other men. Like there was 
they no had other, like, like no sister women. sibling or nothing and i feel like their mom did not show them how to respect women oh, because yeah, they did not know did not. how to respect women sorry i don't mean to call her a bitch but literally that lady was she was there. she was that <laughs> and she didn't they they didn't know how to respect women how to treat women right mm-hmm. so i just feel like they were just full of machismo and hatred yeah i was gonna say that's the thing that it com- when it comes down to like machismo is like i really don't take shit serious from like machista as men like i literally yeah. would just kind of like sit there and watch them like fucking out of there to their own fucking culo. <laughs> they and literally like, fight with themselves exactly, at that point that's what it is because like i literally just sit there and i'm like okay because i want to say every man who is a machista has an ugly background whether it's with their family whether it's 100%. with their dad whether fucking people bullied them at school or people thought they were gay and people would come at them and yeah. now they're like fucking tramados because they always are so ugly and even like i want to say a lot of machista men are also very disrespectful to women and they're abusive it's very ugly. like it's not even just towards like oh like gay men like it has so much to go around that and like for example this person that we're talking to are obviously not going to drop names but this dude would like cheat on his wife dude so he constantly would, i literally saw it with my own eyes and he was very much just like yes yeah, she knows and i don't give a fuck like they're just those vibes overall very ugly men and yeah. It's just, yeah, sometimes it's really sad because I've seen, like, some women who are with, like, machista And I feel bad for women like that because I feel like, unfortunately, women that fall in a relationship with a guy like that, I feel like also had kind of, like, a traumatic childhood where they think that that's okay and that's normal. And so... Once they end up being with a dude like that, they're just like, look, like, it is what it is. Like, like, even if if their dad was like that or they had, like, a... I don't know, just somewhere in there that they're just somewhat used to it because machista men don't only just come for, like, us gay, but I think where it comes down to is, like, machista men will always feel superior. And they see women or anything feminine as less than. And Mm -hmm. it's always degrading. That's why why I don't don't really take it personal when they're just, like, gay. Because I don't... I feel like they're just challenged. Like, okay, you're supposed to be a man and you're, like, super feminine. So it comes into, like, where they just want to fucking argue. Yeah. But I'm just like, no, like, everything in general that y'all do is, like, not okay. Like, they yeah. degrade women. Women, they think they're less than. They're very much just like, well, you need to fucking, even if you're working, you need to come home and clean fucking everything. And this house better be fucking clean And they're fuck. like that with all women. Like, with their, I'm sure they're like that with their daughters, too. And they give their daughters trauma, too. Like, tú me vas a servir de comer. And, like, yeah, you're going to do this. Ponte ugh. a limpiar. And, like, you know, a bunch of shit like that. But, um... I, I just think it's their surroundings and stuff. Because I do know of some, like, men who were at some point very, like, machista. Yeah. It just hap- I just feel like they need the right person or the right friend group or someone to just tell them to calm the fuck down and relax and realize that it's just life. Yeah. It's, it's like, don't take it that fucking serious, bro. <laughs> yeah, I've seen people just go from, like, being very ugly to somewhat just being a lot more calm like i'm not saying you have to be like fucking super levy dubby with gay people if you just don't agree with the way that we live our lives but just realize that you can do whatever the fuck you want to do we can do whatever the fuck we want to do and just go like yeah, you don't have just, to spread the hate just because you don't agree with it yeah like, but uh, it's just a whole nother fucking thing ma- on its own machismo is such a big thing i think specifically where we come from and like mexico mm. and i feel like oh no i lost my train of thought <laughs> <laughs> well hopefully this brings it brings it back but with me that's why like i'm very happy when i get a lot of messages from my followers especially when they happen to be like gay or other boys been makeup or whatever it may be because the amount of times that people have came up to me and told me that i can be somebody that they can look up to makes me so happy because i didn't have that growing up yeah i didn't have that at all like somebody who i could relate to or look up to and be like oh they're doing it so i can do it like yeah so when i can be that for somebody makes me so happy and like i get a lot of shit when i wear my tejanas especially at like events sometimes really from straight people because people see that as like you know like almost like a symbol for like mexico and like men oh. and like blah blah so like i get really ugly looks sometimes where i'm like why the fuck am i wearing that you especially because i wear sickening makeup where you wear mm. your tejanas i but, feel like that's such a signature classy yeah. classic <laughs> louis castro and, and that's what tejanas. i wanted like i've always loved like tejanas and like wearing them but i was just like I don't know. Even my mom has always told me that she loves when I wear my tejanas me with like too. my makeup and Such stuff. Such a vibe. It's, for me, it's more of like a little like statement 
Yeah. And it makes me feel good, obviously. But yeah, so that's why whenever I get like really cute messages and stuff, it makes me feel good because I can see how ugly things can be. Yeah. With especially with the way some of us like grew up or like the men that were in our lives growing up. And I just remembered my thought. I was gonna say that machista men like you know how you were saying that they need some friends around them to like calm them the fuck down Mm -hmm. a lot of time when there's a group of machista guys and they see a guy who isn't a machista they'll start calling him like gay that he's gay yes i see that so much and then that person is like forced to turn into a closed mind because they're just like oh i can't do this because of this or also machista men are the same men who will come at guys who just tend to be really clean yeah like the, like there's so many guys that like like to you know do and their brows so do good. their hair like they're oh they smell so good they have their fix like is this is gay yeah it's like, just dude ugh, just because like, sorry that you fucking look like you haven't washed your cola in nine days but <laughs> literally he looks fucking nice as shit and you're not gonna get laid anytime soon he is no literally <laughs> and like even me coming from like a gay guy obviously but i'm saying like when men like straight men like get all cleaned up and stuff i don't say like they look attractive from like me wanting them like oh, and what <laughs> I do. no but just in general i think just men who take care of themselves are overall like i've met a lot of like straight men who just take care of themselves really yes. well and it, i find it very attractive not in a sense where i'm just like oh i want that one but i'm like and i see the girl it's and i'm cool. like oh mm. yeah i right now i recently ran into um tiktok me salen bien hartos uh, like transformation videos of guys and mm. i love watching them like they go yeah. into the barber yes and they look all, all scruffy like, on that que ver, and, then, and the, then they literally do a whole transformation uh-huh. on them i love watching those because literally and i saw on there that Haircuts are a man's makeup. Makeup, yeah, dude, yes. They look sickening. Yeah, but that's why uh, it's just a lot. But uh, nothing is more attractive than a man who is um, clean. Well, that, but when they're um, soft. No, 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 no. On no. the inside and their dick. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how the fuck do you see it? Honest, loving, nurturing. No, that uh, they sensitive. know they they're <laughs> comfortable in their sexuality. Is that the word? Yeah, they're comfortable in their sexuality no there's a better word for it but just basically they're like, sure of their sexuality no i don't know what it is but basically they're <laughs> they don't care to do anything like that whether it's like getting their fucking eyebrows done or like lining up their fucking beard or whatever it may be because they're they're sure they're sure of themselves like yeah they're just like bitch i don't have to prove to you or tell you that i'm not gay like i know i'm not just like to look good it's yeah. just yeah but See, a lot of machistas even coming for men who want to take care of themselves or look better. So if a machista ever tries to come at you, just flip them off. No, just run away. Fuck himself. Literally (laughs) run away. You don't even want to deal with Yeah, you don't want to deal with none of those things. I just feel like they're like, yeah, pobrecito. Y luego para acabarla, I feel like they're stuck in their ways. I feel like it's so hard to change their mind. It's like, oh, once you have one of those, ugh. Yeah. And lo- logo, they're very like protective too. Like you're mine. What's mine? It's mine. And also shout out and thank you to those people who have heard or caught like a machista saying some stupid shit out loud, Hell and y'all stand yeah. up. Obviously, you guys, that's not your responsibility to stand up for somebody else. But like, I've seen it happen so many times, or even with me, where like somebody says some stupid shit to me, and somebody else stands up for me, or somebody else says something. I love it because I almost feel like machistas be saying this shit to get a response from us but mm-hmm. like for example when it happens to me i don't say anything because i'm just like eh, me vale me vale verga. <laughs> me vale verga. and when somebody else comes up to them and challenges them they're yeah. just like now oh, what because they're so used to being especially when it's a woman like yeah i've seen it happen to me where like some guy yelled some homophobic shit to me i didn't say nothing because i didn't give a fuck and some lady um, I think she yelled like, hey, you like, shut the fuck up. Blah, blah, blah. And he was just like, now what? Because <laughs> they they f- always and feel like they're superior. So I, I'm assuming when somebody stood up for it, the gay guy, not only somebody, but it was a woman. And she was being like, what the fuck's good? He yeah. was like, now what? Well, remember that happened at the mall in, in one of the malls in Salinas? Mm. Louis, we went shopping. I had Travis. Travis was a little baby. Oh, I think you said this story already. Well, I'm going to say it again. No, yeah, but I'm saying, like, I think you did, huh? Yeah, Louis went, we went shopping, and Louis went to the store across from me, and I was going into the Disney store. And this group of fucking mocosos from high school, ya grandes, like, maybe fucking juniors, seniors in high school, Mm -hmm. start calling out for Louis. And Louis was kind of far, so I feel like you probably fucking couldn't hear them, but the girl, and then one of the guys out they were with was like, Louis, you fucking says yeah. the bad word dude literally f- 
fucking in front of me, like literally in front of me. He was at me. I got so fucking heated up. I was like, what the fuck did you say? And he just looks at me like shocked. And I was like, don't fucking be saying that shit. Mm -hmm. And then he was just like, oh, oh no, no. I, I, like, I didn't it's mean always that. always like that, yeah. And he got all like fucking shit. And I was like, that's what I fucking thought. Yeah. And he just like, he walked, just put his head down, didn't fucking say shit. And even his little friends were like, ooh. Yeah. Because like, they knew that he fucked up. But ya no dijo nada al güey. Mm -hmm. Pendejo baboso. Che feo. <laughs> yeah, I don't really waste a lot of my time, but also thank you for that because yeah. it does mean a lot to yeah, me. Yeah, but you but definitely shouldn't have to waste your breath on people like that. Yeah, I, I don't really waste my time on people like that, but the few times that I have where for whatever reason I just wasn't having it that day and I've stood up for myself, it always turns into like... I work. love when Louis does that. I've oh. been with him on so many fucking occasions where mm -hmm. they will fucking say something under their breath mm -hmm. or they'll say something and Louis's like, what? And mm -hmm. he'll, like, smile at them. So, yeah. like, petty. Like, wait, say that again? Oh, no, bitch. But I will go up to their face. No, I'll he, literally be yes. like, can I help you with something? And they'll be like, well, I'm like, you literally just called me. And like, no, I no, didn't. No, they're like, no, no, I I'm didn't. like, what'd you say? And like, I didn't say anything. I'm like, well, the next time you want to say something, don't say when I turn around. Say when I'm right here. Period. And they'll be like, oh, no, <laughs> like fucking pussies dude. yeah that's why i say like i don't waste dude. my time on it because it's always this they always do that it makes me Dang. crack the fuck i'm just in the back like <laughs> it's just it's just like just uh, it's literally a waste of my time and it's a waste of your time so like why are you doing it see why is it el pinche culo so talking about like people standing up for one another and being a whole happy world no, yeah. um like i said it's not something that i expect yeah um and then also like i have been dealing with shit like that my whole life so i'm just like nah, i don't really care for it but i do really appreciate when people do like stand up and like say something mm -hmm. but i will admit that whenever it's a a guy that stands up for me it feels so much more like different uh, he's like oh <laughs> <laughs> for him, i'm like please <laughs> All right. no i feel like it like low-key heals like my inner child Aww. because i I'm so used to it being, like, me with, like, men. There is no relationship yeah. besides, like, a sexual loving relationship. And mm -hmm. that's, like, when I'm dating somebody or just having fun with them. But, like, as a, like, a, like a gay person to a straight person with me, I feel like sometimes there is no relationship. Okay. Or it's never really, like, genuine. Because there has been times where, like, I'll have, like, gay, no, 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 I'll have straight friends who will only really talk to me sometimes when their other straight friends aren't around. You know what I mean? Ew. Yeah, like it's so so that's what why it's just fuck? like I keep my circle very small and I also don't really interact with a lot of like just men in general yeah. because I I straight hate straight men. Straight men, yeah. I hate that. So I hate like the like oh I'll talk to you when like these friends aren't around. Ew, that is blah, such blah. an awkward vibe. I'd be like <laughs> Yeah, it's it's just cringy in general, but um one place where I have a lot of, like, just emotions uh -huh. is always at the gym. <gasps> I'm always just, oh like, gosh. so, like, I, I found a gym right now that, like, I'm very comfortable in, and I love going to that gym. But um, at the gym, it's always, like, a place that's a little bit uncomfortable for me because it's the closest thing to, like, a machista man i can see that because it's a bunch of men who are working out for their bodies bunch and trying to show have it. <laughs> they're just trying to show like how strong or how strong they can be or who can lift the most and just like <laughs> all of this crazy shit so sometimes when they see like a gay man in there it could be a little like you know what oh, i mean he. but especially with me with having this hourglass body. <laughs> Fuck no, you. Yeah. But just, it's, okay. I feel like I I have, like, a lot that goes in my head. Because, for example, I feel for the girls. Because I, I always say, <sighs> you should dress up to the gym however makes you feel good and comfortable. Whatever it may be. Yeah. If you're trying to look good for yourself, you're trying to look good for your crush, if you're trying to just look good for a picture, it doesn't fucking matter where, just, whatever the fuck yeah. you want. But I can feel for the girls where sometimes they'll wear something and you just can't help but like notice that people are staring mm -hmm. and some people will be like well that's why they're dressed like that but i'm like no they're dressed like that because they feel comfortable or it just probably feels more comfy for their workout or whatever the fuck it may be yeah but for me because i am gay and I have my body done i feel like i get a little bit of judgment from both sides <gasps> we're like from the boys and the girlies no, no, no. Just saying, like, from two different things. Where, like, one, it can be like, well, he's gay. That's one. Two, why is he dressed flamboyant? And three, why the fuck does he have the body of a girl? 
Damn. So I'll just be like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like dripping little sweat. <laughs> yeah, because obviously I'm not fucking stupid. I know my body is not a typical hombre body. Yeah, like, man. My, my man's is. <laughs> Girl has a big old butt. <laughs> no, but it's just, I can just, obviously, I'm not fucking yeah. stupid. Yeah. But um, there'll be times where, like, I'll be at the gym and I'll notice, like, people staring at my butt. Uh-huh. And it's always, like, very, very uncomfortable because there's so many different reasons why they could be staring at my butt. It could yeah. be for good. It could be for bad. It could be for judgment. Or it could be to talk shit. Whatever it may be. But there's one time I was at the gym and... When I'm at the gym, I like to just have, like, tunnel vision. Okay. I don't like to look, pay attention to my surroundings. I don't like to see where people are looking at. I don't and like you to have see your little headphones on. Yeah, I'm in my own fucking world. Yeah, so Like, period. I feel amazing at the gym. But this one time, I went to the gym with Alex. And we decided to try a new fucking gym. For whatever fucking reason, we were bored. And we're like, oh, let's go try a new gym. Uh-huh. So we tried this new gym. And <clears throat> um, I was working out. And I had some really tight shorts on. And I feel like, obviously, people are going to look like, oh, there's a guy with really tight shorts on, but also I have a fucking big old bumpy. Big old ass. Yeah, so I was working out, and I noticed fucking Alex's, like, eyes were going somewhere else. They kept going somewhere else, and I was just like, yeah, he's probably bored. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was just like, he doesn't want to watch me work out. So I just kept thinking he kept, like, glancing away, but as I'm working out, I'm, like, looking at myself. All I see from the side of my eyes, like, Alex somewhat, like, starting to, like, say something to a guy. And then I was like, wait, like, what's going on? Oh, shit. So I turn around and then Alex is still kind of like telling them something. So then I'm like, wait, what happened? He's like, oh, well, this dude was fucking taking pictures of you. <gasps> and I was just and obviously my butt was facing him. And then I was like, wait, really? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, like, what were they doing? So I'm a, so from what I remember, the guy was like kind of like elbowing his friend to like look at me because they pointed at me. Oh, hell And then no. after that, the guy looked and I guess they both like giggled a little bit. And then the guy like low-key tried pulling out his phone <gasps> to like, take a picture so the only thing that's like different about me from everybody else in that gym who's working out was that i'm a guy with a big old butt yeah and um i'm assuming that obviously it's not the normal either like i don't think you're gonna come across and i don't th mean just like my big old butt but i like i just want to say like my shape in general i feel like is more feminine yeah normal because of my surgeries mm-hmm so um, I guess Alex just like started telling him shit and like asking why he was taking pictures and the guy tried acting stupid that like, he wasn't taking pictures He's like dude I literally saw you and the guy was like no blah 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 Ugh. but you could tell the guy was kind of like oh shit and his friend didn't, didn't say think anything anybody was gonna like yeah. say shit to him and his friend didn't say anything his friend was just kind of like <laughs> <laughs> he's like doo, 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 yeah doo. literally kept working out <laughs> or whatever so then we left it at that so then um we kept working out and i was really hell uncomfortable we were only in the gym for like maybe 10 minutes max what? you guys just, had just in. gotten there and i continued like my fucking workout or whatever but i felt really uncomfortable and then um alex ended up going back and was just kind of like hey like i just want to say wherever because the guy left the one who's taking pictures okay because i'm pretty sure he literally felt like fuck like one they caught me he and felt like, two stupid. i felt like stupid because he left and we didn't see him for the rest of the workout but Alex basically told a friend, like, hey, like, I don't know why the fuck he was taking pictures, but, like, don't be fucking taking pictures. Like, that's disrespectful. Period. You know, must be uncomfortable, whatever, whatever. And the guy was basically just like, no, yeah, I don't know why he was taking pictures. But <gasps> the other guy started getting heated because Alex came up to him to tell him something. And we were basically, I ended up getting in. I was like, look, dude, we're not trying to fucking fight you. We're not trying to fucking shove a dumbbell up your ass. All <laughs> we're saying is, like, literally just leave us the fuck alone and anybody in this fucking gym i was Don't like be fucking weird taking pictures of people what the fuck yeah so it was just like super awkward and weird but we ended up like squashing the beef i guess at the end like the guy well not the guy who took the picture that one literally his, ran away yeah but his friend apologized he. for him and, like we shook hands or whatever he was just saying like that he was sorry and that he doesn't know why he was taking pictures and all this shit but it was so fucking like uncomfortable. Ew. I'm glad Alex said something, dude. No, yeah. What the fuck? And that's what I was gonna say. Like, it made me happy because, like, well, one, anybody who stands up for me or anybody else will always make me happy. But also, just being like another man standing yeah. up for me, like, made me feel like one, not only happy, but two, like, more safe. And three, just to also hopefully these guys like see it in their head like okay it's not cool or like let me not do it again oh, yeah. like not for me but for somebody else because i feel like if i would have said something they could have easily maybe still been like shut up like you know or yeah. like if another i don't know if like another if a gay guy or even or like a girl, girl said something they would have been like shut the fuck up yeah but i almost feel like 
a straight guy telling another fucking straight quote unquote bro like calm the fuck down he was just like oh shit to the and fact that like, he fucking like disappeared and ran away but yeah it was just um not a cute comfortable feeling but yeah well i'm sorry you have to deal with a lot of that shame like know, you get annoying. so much fucking shit like that and it's ugh, it's so annoying and like we see it a lot because we're around him a lot and like nad to our sister oh she gets so fucking pissed when oh, they yeah. do anything to us but especially to louis she'll literally fuck someone up yeah no but, and i appreciate it oh i just we hate it so much it's so fucking annoying yeah it's annoying but Shout out again to everybody who has said something or stood up for somebody because it does mean a lot to us. Yeah. And it's not even just for like us in the moment. I just hope that for whoever the fuck they're telling or even me, whoever the fuck I'm telling, I just hope it works for them to like not fucking do it again. Yeah. I think those people really just want a reaction. That's all it really is. Yeah. And I would say as you guys as our listeners, if like you ever feel like something's not right, like maybe you see a guy fucking yelling at a girl um, I mean, if it's dangerous, don't, but mm. maybe like tell them, shut the fuck up. <laughs> or like if they're making hateful comments towards somebody, like shut them up real quick. He's yeah. like, them and just calladitos like pendejos. Yeah. Or it doesn't even have to be like ugly. Like I've turned down some like shit that I've seen or like arguments or something by just being like, hey, like calm down. Like yeah. it's not that serious. And then be like, <laughs> and you're just like breathe. It's not. <laughs> Take a second and calm down. Calm down. <laughs> yeah. They have it's because there's a lot of pishos. Pick <laughs> people <laughs> that have <laughs> anger <Bitch>, issues. <laughs> How was pishos supposed to be people? <laughs> oh, you were gonna say issues? Yes. Oh, people and issues. <laughs> pishos. <laughs> people that have a lot of anger issues. Pishos. <laughs> people with issues are pishos. Period. <laughs> you're a pishol. You're a pi- you're a pishol, huh? You go up to them. <laughs> I know that you're a visual. Um, actually, I just remembered. I um, shout out to Alex. He always be putting up buds. We went to um a football baseball game. Fuck. Uh, or gym. We just went. To, I think it was a football game not mm. that long ago, and there was a fucking guy yelling at his girlfriend. Like as we were walking to our spot. He was like, like with his hands and everything, just like yelling at her, like, bah, 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 like you know. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, and I was like, look, the guy is like yelling at his girl. And then um, Alex was just like, oh shit, what the fuck? And he like kept doing, it, and the girl was like, Aah. she was Aww. just like crying, but see that, and I felt so bad. So then he he went up to the security guard, mm-hmm. and then he was like, yo, I don't know what's going on, but can you go check on him? Because he's, like, raising his voice really bad at the girl. Yeah, and I feel like... And, like, that's not okay. Uh-huh. That, not to interrupt, but I feel like that's a really good way of doing it, because, like, sometimes, like we said, it could be dangerous, or, like, you don't want to put yourself in that, but something as like that yeah. is very helpful, because you're giving somebody with, like, legal fucking power to go do something and be, to like, be like... yo, and I think... And literally the security it. guard went right away. Yeah. So I feel like stuff like that are good and it's always a better way of like doing it. Cause yeah, yeah I don't know. That's why I say like I appreciate um, when people stand up for us because I know you don't have to. Yeah. And it's not like other people's responsibility, but that's why like I appreciate when it is. And yeah, it's happened a lot of times. We're just with us in general, like a lot of people just taking pictures in an uncomfortable ways and yeah. stuff. But <sighs> it's a whole nother fucking story. Es que own. los hombres se pasan de verga. We should just live in a world with girls and gays. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh, like, that'd be great. The girls are gonna be like, so no dig. <laughs> no, and even the gay guys were like, so no dig. <laughs> I know. We're like, nah, but I know. We're like, we'll so just no, leave no. some dildos. <laughs> it is, bitch. We're like, nah, bitch. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> nah, bitch. Damn, this fucking episode went from like love to, to like machistas. Mm. What? That's it. <laughs> but yeah, you guys, um definitely will be posting the fucking meme of the webbles on Oh um, yes, you have pretty to nice I want to see it. If you guys want to see it. Yeah. And oh, fuck. I was going to say I'll try to find the Instagram page who reposted it. Yeah. But there's no fucking way. That was like 3 years ago. The Damn. amount of content Ooh, that somebody could, and that's yeah. a meme page so they for see they already had like 10,000 posts. Like yeah. I'm not kidding. You're not going to find yeah, that shit. Yeah, it would have been like funny to like add the some of the comments so y'all can see how fucking stupid some of these comments were on there but yeah 
Yeah, there's going to be no possible way for me to find I out also you. have, this has nothing to do with what he just said, uh-huh. but I kind of have an idea for the podcast. What? Well, not for the podcast, for the IG. I think every Friday I'm going to take over Pretty Not Smart's Instagram and I'm going to do a fun fact Friday. <laughs> oh, bitch. So I'm going to post on the grid a fun fact and the next epi, I'll talk about it and your response it. So uh, we could okay. talk about yeah, it to make conversation. I'm going to be like, bring it onto the podcast. Yeah, well, we'll start it there. Mm, and then maybe for season two, we'll have fun facts with Y.O.A. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I really don't like it. Uh, they're like, boring. <laughs> like, no thanks. We like Louis spelling dumb shit. No, it's because you actually do bring some good fun facts. I was fucking in the shower the other day, and I was thinking so many fun. Why the fuck does that happen to my brain? I just I think of, like, the randomest shit. But we have to do, like, an episode with aliens and shit. <gasps> We're going to have an alien. As our guest, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I ain't got my beans. <laughs> Bitch, like, get out. Nah, I'm okay. They're all like invisible. Uh, he's like, Zhoom, he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> well, since Valentine's Day is coming up, and well, actually, it already passed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I hope you guys have an amazing what? We're all time traveling with this fucking episode. I know. Uh, well, I hope you had a great Valentine's Day. Yes. Comment down below what you did with your significant other or by yourself. Because that's Cuba. Or if you didn't even fucking celebrate, that's fine, too. I saw a lot of comments of people being like, fuck Valentine's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, I was like, yeah, I'll retweet that one. Yeah. <laughs> or like if you have a cute little Valentine's, like the one that Louis had and I got fucking drunk. Oh, yeah, my <laughs> Galentine's with Betty. We should have talked about your valid Galentine. We still can. Well, Louis threw his very first Galentine's, and it was so cute. Yeah, I tried. Tell him how you bought a bunch of stuff. I, I was yeah. telling you out to you guys because I low-key was a little embarrassed. <laughs> 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 it's because I bought a bunch of shit dupes, right? And when you're out shopping, especially for like events, you're getting all these bags and spending all this money. So after I was done shopping, I kid you not, you guys, my carro was full. Like <laughs> literally looked like I was living in my car. I was like, ah, oh! I couldn't even find the steering wheel when I went in there. And when I got to decorating, I was like, that's it. <laughs> like literally once I put everything, I was like, uh, there was like nothing fucking there it looked so cute though like he made like the little plates and he um set up a wine and sip or sip and paint oh, little yeah. station <laughs> it was so it. cute he put little chips in bowls it was so but then cute. i told her i was like i literally feel like i'm a teacher like about to do a parent teacher <laughs> conference with like the parents and the students he was all setting up his little chip station <laughs> He was setting up the folders and the report cards. But hey, like I was, I was pretty proud of my. I know it didn't look like the grand thing compared to a lot of other ones, but I was happy because I'm not a decorative person at all. I don't have the energy or creative brains to decorate. I yeah. leave that up to Yoatsi. So I was like, okay, hey, this is cute for my first time. Yeah, no, it was super cute, and I feel like the little group that you invited was so perfect. So fun. We had. Um, the little sip and paint thing. Louis made us fucking draw a bunch of different mm-hmm. shit. We were all buzzing. I actually vlogged it, you guys. And <gasps> in my vlog, you can see me buying everything and how I Yay! set it up. It was funny. I was like editing it. And then I was like, bam, I'm done. You like already setting posted everything it? Up. Yeah, I already posted okay. it. So if you guys haven't watched it, run. go watch that. But I saw a comment that made me be like, mm. what? What? because what I was saying? already feeding like a little like. It wasn't like that grand. What they say? And somebody had a comment. I, it was the <laughs> when I posted on my TikTok, like the little reveal. And ah. somebody was like, <laughs> they weren't mean about it though, but they were like, this is cute, but it looks like you were on a budget. Ah. I was like, <laughs> They're like, Victor, you actually did this? <laughs> Fuck you. I was like, why well, tried? No, it was all about the vibe. Because uh, the decor wasn't that good. Was like, <laughs> You're like, no, the vibes brought it. It was so cute. And then shout out to uh, Riri. She taught us a dance. Oh, yeah, that was sick. Dude, that was I'm like, what? Yeah, Dude. that was a sick <laughs> new It was yeah, a fun it was a really little fun group. Night. And I was, I was really stressed. I was worried about the decor. I was worried about what we were going to do. Because as a host, you should be the one with all the activities. <laughs> so I was like, fuck, what if I can't pull this off? But it, it was, was fun. Good. We were all putting on wigs and shit. It was crazy. Yeah, and, uh, so At count. Nah. At <laughs> nah. Shut up. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited for the next hosting, one of many. But yeah. thanks for coming. And also thank you guys for listening to this week's episode. Yeah, and remember to watch every single episode because before you know it, it'll end. All right. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye. Bye.